Howdy everyone! At the end of April 2022, I hosted a Twitter space where I made some predictions about Splatoon 3 story mode and had the opportunity to answer more of your questions. Here's how it went. Splatoon 3. Splatoon 3 story, baby. I'm so excited. I think uh, Arden was talking about how the file on the Nintendo eShop for Splatoon 3 is bigger than Splatoon 2 had at launch, and that can mean a lot of things. Maybe they're gonna have the ranked modes available from the start, maybe there's gonna be a lot of substantial story stuff going on. I feel like we need more cutscene content. Octo Expansion definitely started that. I feel like we're gonna see a lot more of the characters, for sure. Like, people are just discovering so much every single day, and I can't wait until we have the direct. Thank you, uh, Cloudy at Fluffy Small Cloud. What's your prediction for Pearl and Marina's roles in Splatoon 3? As far as I remember, I don't think we've seen anything about them yet. Thinking emoji. Hmm. I am working on a video about that exact topic. My patrons know, my channel members know, but uh, I think I've been scripting it since like... I had the idea after the Salmon Run trailer, but um, didn't actually get started. I was wondering, like, yes, exactly, where are they? I feel like Marina's definitely doing something with technology if she's not working on... Um, cause the, the spawn point launchers, they look very Octarian. I think it was C senpai who also talks about that. I feel like she's working on some new gear, some weapons. She had those hyper bombs from Octo Expansion. Wherever Pearl goes, Marina's gonna go. Wherever Marina goes, Pearl is gonna go. I feel like it'd be fun if they went to Splatsville and checked it out. Since Chaos won and everything. Like, they just went on a road trip. That would be really cool. I hope that Marina is the one who gets to remix Calamari Incantation next. Because we had a fire mix from DJ Octavio. And he wasn't even on our side yet. <laughs> like, he dropped the mixtape. The, the Inkopolis Memorial mixtape. Thank you for your question. Okay, so, at Yukimura Tensai says, The new ink bow is pretty. It's a pretty sweet new weapon. Can't wait to main it in Turf 4. I wonder what other new weapon types will be in Splatoon 3. Any thoughts? Thinking in squid emoji. Hmm, yeah, I think I was talking to Arden about the... Uh, earlier, and if you don't know who Arden is, they are the one who worked on the Octo Expansion retranslated mod with Rasicus, and also made the uh, Pearl Swears mod, as well as like a bunch of other cool stuff in Blender. So, actually, I think I was uh, tweeting at him, like replying and thinking about like, what is that second weapon class going to be? Because with the dualies, we had the Brella alongside it. Even in the Splatoon 2 era, people were talking about having spray cans as weapons, but then I think that sort of like devolved into what dualies are. And we have brushes, we have brushes, we have rollers. What else as an object could paint really well, like off the top of my head? Something that has to do with sponges, probably. Like, imagine if we had. <laughs> Like this, this is such a, like a crazy thing off the top of my head, but like a giant sponge weapon that you just—it's like a Swiffer. Like you, if you guys have ever seen those Swiffer mobs, I don't know that that would just be so insane. I think it would still be like a brush class though. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely see what they got going on though. But yeah, I'm excited for the. Uh, I think they called it the Stringer officially in English. I'm very excited for it too. It seems to play kind of like a squiffer, just a side with like the vertical and horizontal orientations. Let's get into this one. So at C Senpai, with all this talk of new idols, how would y'all feel about Off the Hook simply returning? Oh, no new idols, just the devs expanding on the groundwork we already got last game. Vividly remember on that unpopular opinions tweet, a lot of people said the characters Especially idols were shallow. Oh, I don't agree 100%. I definitely think more time should be spent with them instead of introducing more characters. I think a reason the Squid Sisters were pushed aside in Splatoon 2 was because of Off the Hook. 
now since Squid Sisters and Off the Hook both had their intro games, Splat 3 is finally when they can move forward with development. <gasps> Whoa, Galaxy Brain actually, right here. This, this 100%, six months to a year after the Octo expansion came out, I think I was talking um, to a bunch of other people about how the Squid Sisters don't have that much of a backstory within the games. There's the Squid Sisters stories online, but a lot of people don't know about that. It still would be nice to have it in the game. I think we were talking about like a Calamari ex expansion or something like that. I think off the hook as idols in Splatsville, especially if they wanted to leave Inkopolis, wouldn't be... I say it wouldn't be that surprising like, as a concept, but if Nintendo were to actually do that with their Splatoon, with the Splatoon developers, I feel like there'd be a little bit of backlash. I'd be fine with it. I mean, I love Pearl Marina. I've really gotten used to them as the announcers and whatnot. I would be happy. The only problem is a lot of people who aren't really, you know, who want to see something new and the Splatoon 2.5 people would probably, I don't know, find an issue with it. We have to wait until like, June, July to kind of get a better idea with the new Splatoon Direct that might come out. But those are definitely valid opinions. Thank you, as always, to Senpai. Let me mute real quick and take my phone out of the case because I can't tell if it's doing that thing where the, uh, the sound will sort of come through the case. And uh, that's just kind of not really a pleasant listening experience. So let me just mute real quick and take care of that. All right, we're back. I don't know if y'all can hear the Beneath the Mask uh, playing in the background, but yeah, I have been trying to finish Persona 5 because it's been years and I need to get royal already. I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving on with the questions though. All right, so we got a Jack Nano 708. Do you think the outcome of the Final Fest would cause the story mode to shift to a slightly dark tone? and a possibility of Marina also being targeted by Octavia. Well, definitely after Octo Expansion and looking at some of the concepts that were in Haikara Walker, which is the art book, they wanted to shift and dial the dark atmosphere up to, I want to say, at least 90%. There are some horrifying things we could have potentially seen for the bosses, for some of the levels. I think that we are going to see a lot more challenging bosses in Return of the Mammalians and probably onwards in other DLC. It's going to get dark. The characters, I mean, I think there's going to be more happening than just brainwashing. And Octavio is definitely going to try to find out what's going on with his soldiers, right? They're being... What if the fuzzy ink, we may think it looks all cute and furry right now, but what if it's worse? Y'all, like, we have no idea. And um, if Marina does confront Octavio, I think that would be great for the story. Because yes, Agent 8 and a lot of other Octolings are just kind of chilling in Inkopolis now. But there are still things to be resolved, especially since she was in his, uh, she was in his unit, like working directly under him. That's going to be crazy if so. I think I was talking to a mutual about that a few days ago. I would love to see those two characters sort of talking <laughs> on screen. Oh, honestly, it would be really crazy. But yeah, thanks for your question, Jack. Hey, T. Danny is in the house. Welcome, welcome. So, would you be left in shock if story mode for Splatoon 3 makes use of cutscenes? And what would be your top three specials in your opinion? Oh boy. Oh boy. Um... There is one special that I don't know is confirmed at the moment that I would really love to see come back, which would be Kraken. But out of everything we've seen so far, out of everything, I like the Ink Strike launcher. Oh, my Ink Strike, my beloved. <laughs> I, I'm so happy it's back because Splashdown's great. It's not the same, though. Uh, the Ink back looks really fun. And honestly, the Crab. The crab for sure. Like when they finally showed us like the player POV and being able to pilot it, it looks so cool. If we get to see the characters really interacting with each other, like on the level of I wanna say 
the final scene in Octave Expansion, if we get more of that, I will be so shook. I will be so happy, so thrilled, because this is what we need. There have been a lot of people who critique the series and saying that our the characters in Splatoon are kind of empty. It, it gives us, the fans, more of a chance to sort of create our own headcanons for them. But to see the developers take some of those and, you know, just sort of bring more life to them, I think that would be great. Like, I want to see Captain and Asian, New Agent 3 interacting. I want to see Callie and Marie talking with Pearl and Marina. You know, I want to see them in action. I don't want to have to, like, wait until the final scene of the story mode just to see that happen. So I will be really happy. But anyway, thank you for your question, Danny. Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. Splatoon JP is posting more renders and info on her four weapons. So that's pretty cool. But these new renders, we in the future for real. It's not a dream. Man, it's exciting for me to be able to watch the build up to Splatoon 3 a lot closer than I did with Splatoon 2. Can't wait to see where things go from here. Another one from Octavia Octoling. Thank you. What if Octavio fights on our side in the next game? He doesn't look all fuzzy like the other Octarians. Oh goodness. All this time has passed, right? All this time has passed, and I never once considered the idea of Fuzzy Octavio. <laughs> no, someone's gonna draw that now. I- oh no. Oh, it's kind of cursed. But, yeah, I definitely hope that he is on our side. Like, I might be- it might be super copium, but it seems like he's running from something in that trailer. Just, I don't know, just the way that his mech is tumbling down the side of that mountain. He's trying to get away from something. And he's probably gonna... I don't know who he finds first. New Agent 3 or the Squid Beak Splatoon or Cuttlefish. Because those two, they need to... Honey, they need to talk. They, they need to reconcile. Uh, but yeah. I hope that he... I don't know that he's gonna need our help somehow. And he gets his redemption arc from there. Because it's been... It's been like two games. He, he's he's gotta he's gotta have something new going for him. I hope he is on our side, especially in the promotional art. You can see that. Uh, hopefully he he has his moment. But yeah, thank you for that. Next tweet. This one is from Slink Chief nine eight six three eight. From the first trailer of Splatoon three, we saw a rocket almost at the end. Meaning some humans are still alive. Do you think the person on that base made the million virus? Um, I wonder if it'll allude to humans. I mean, it'd be kind of weird to see humans in that in the Splatoon art style. Like aside from, well, no, we never did see a human. It was just a a skeleton buried next to a Wii U in the first game. It's pretty crazy. Uh, uh I definitely think there's gonna be an, a space theme. Seems like Grisco is using the golden eggs to power it too. I mean, I'd be I'd be shook if it was humans or like a last human, although it would sort of undermine the whole like twelve thousand years passing by and like all civilization. Just uh, I don't really know. Could people have been up in a space colony for that long? Who who knows? But uh, yeah, whoever's like on the moon probably yeah is responsible for the fuzzy ink. So. I don't know. That is that was like a really good idea, but as far as like humans being involved, it's a maybe. I I, I don't think like if you were to ask Rasticus that question, I don't think that they'd agree about like I, I think it it's more interesting to just have a new species and evolution continuing. It's good it's good food for thought though. Appreciate it. Alright, so I'm gonna hydrate. I always like when I'm uh, on stream, I always encourage everyone to do the same, so please go ahead and do that if you need to. Next question, Fluffy Small Cloud. I right, hope you're doing all right. It's good to see you. Let me get it up in here. So, hi again. Hey, hey, what's your prediction on the final boss for the story mode? Do you think it'll be a returning character or possibly a brand new, never before seen character? I think. It could be a bit of both. Because, I mean, Pearl definitely took Tartar out. And even though the manga's not canon, 
it sort of hints at what could happen that it's not over for him. I mean, even if it was, we still see him in the Final Fest poster, right? So that that's kind of like it's not really foreshadowing, but it's kind of like hinting that he could be back. That he was like they had to have balance out, I think, having a villain on either side, because Octavio's on chaos, so I feel like it could be Tartar and a new character. The final boss has to be something that'll really like rock our socks off that we never saw coming. It, it can't be Octavio again, because third time is not the charm of this. They say third time is a charm, but a third boss battle with him is not what I'm looking for at all. They're definitely going to space. I think that it's going to have to do something with not only the fuzzy ink, but potentially Tartar and whatever is just... Wherever we're taking that rocket to, I think that we hijack it in some way. Because you see in the trailer that which is probably it's gonna look a lot different in the final version but new agent 3 is sort of running up that um walkway to where the shuttle is i, I don't know although i feel like we're going into space and seeing what's happening there that would be really cool like playing the through the game seeing those scenes and all of them having context it would oh, it'd be so cool going to space with their little squid Y'all, it's about to go down, for sure. At the duck the draw, thank you. So you think Pearl Marina will be a part of the story mode again? What if they have a big role or partner up with the Squid Sisters? Also, any thoughts on Lil' Judd being a brownish yellow since the recent trailer? And the concerts, what do you think we'll see? I hope Octavio makes an appearance with Callie, because we need that. Please, Nintendo, I beg. Little Judd is... Little Judd's going through it right now. Like, what happened? Were they... Like, I just imagine, like, a bunch of characters from Inkopolis were driving to Splatsville, right? And Lil Judd somehow fell out the back of the truck and just got roughed up making his way through the desert. <laughs> making his way to Splatsville. And he's just all, like, he's suntanned and everything. That's my headcanon for what happened. Because Judd still looks pretty, like, cleaned up and everything. But then again, Lil Judd was on Team Chaos, whereas Judd is neutral, so... Maybe he's getting up into some shenanigans, who knows? <laughs> Pearl and Marina need to be a part of the story. I don't want them to, like, be in a separate DLC this 2023. If they make a cameo in Return of the Mammalians, that would be cool. If there's a different part of the story that gets unlocked after, and they're there, that would be cool, too. I think the concerts are going to be great, especially if we get new idols. We're going to have six people on stage. <laughs> I think Octavio and uh, Callie will... Maybe he'll, not only would he have like a potential confrontation with Marina, but do you think he'll get around to apologizing to Callie? Who knows? I know the gimmick is that she puts on the shade sometimes because it's funny. Maybe, maybe that happens, right? Thank you for the question. Uh, C Senpai is back again. With Agent 8 and 4 being MIA, do you all think they'll have a similar role as Agent 3 did in Octo Expansion, but in the Splat 3 story mode instead? Seems fairly large, and 4 had a lot of their story mode content cut from Splat 2. Yeah, there were a lot of scra like, scrap scenes. I think they were originally going to be the one who shot Kelly with the ink, the low tide ink. But they decided to have Marie come in and do it. It's hinted 8 might be with Sheldon. And they said they want to be like Marina, who's an engineer. 4 is still an open book. I originally thought they'd be the main agent or with Marie still. But I don't know what they can do, honestly. Yeah, right? I think it's crazy. Like, I don't want them... I mean, this is Nintendo at the core, though. Like, we still have Princess Peach getting kidnapped for, like, main Mario game content. So, maybe Ford did get spirited away somehow. And you're also trying to find them when you get recruited by... Cuttlefish is retired, so I think we do see him still. But, like, Marie and Callie recruit with uh, Captain 3. So... Agent 4 probably did get kidnapped, not gonna lie. Either that, <laughs> or they have a moment where they come in and, like, you know, help you with a fight. It'd be cool if they helped us with some of the earlier story levels instead of waiting to the very end. But yeah, I am curious as to their whereabouts and why new Agent 3 is an Agent 5, right? Unless they decide to quit and just live their normal life. 
after saving Callie. I hope that it, yeah, is with Sheldon too. Okay, so next question is from Blue Lightning 989 back at it again. Thoughts on the new Salmon Run? I was a bit surprised when I saw it coming back since Little Buddy is with us. It was a little wrong doing the job now, lol. So new Salmon Run, right? I remember in my reaction back in February, I was like, wait, how is it back? What? But then I'm like, oh, why would they get rid of it? It's a popular mode. And, like, you can always play it even during Splatfest with a different rotation. So why would they deprive people of that? Because I still feel like your, you know, your main uh, player character who's going to be New Agent 3 is still... Little Buddy is not going to be with us when we finish the story. And uh, there's got to be something that still justifies Grisco um, having, like, having business in Splatsville and Inkopolis. Something still justifies it somehow. I think since the migration happens every 70 years, like that one Sunken Scroll said, maybe you need to keep... <laughs> And you need to keep the population low or something that sounds so messed up. It sounds so wrong, but like maybe they're just getting really violent and you have no choice. Instead of just harvesting eggs, like you're really doing this because it's legitimate danger to people or something. <laughs> It'd be horrible, I don't know. What if little buddy like turns on us halfway through the story? <laughs> I I don't know. They gotta do something to keep us on our toes. But I think it still looks fun. The new uniforms are even better than before. They sort of went with the uh, minor look since we had that headgear item back in Splatoon 2. Kind of like a minor slash firefighter. It's really dope. I think it looks cool. Okay, we got a tweet from at Fake Yusuf. I think the one thing that I don't see many people talk about is the fact that Octavio turned the Octobot into a mecha type suit. This has me thinking of how this and other boss fights might be in the campaign. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I had a lot of thoughts on it when we first saw that trailer back in 2021. It looks like it's parts from the NILS statue. I think, who else was it who spoke about that? I think it was C-Senpai. Um, but it does look like it's refurbished. <laughs> we know that, uh, like, the remains of, like, that statue have been floating out there, just sort of uncollected. It's probably going to function differently. You can probably like walk around in it like it's an Ava or something. That would be fun. But that's not even the polished version, right? This trailer looks cool, but they're going to like add more textures, change up the locations and environments a little bit, like how they did with the Octa Expansion trailer. So it's probably going to look even better than this, actually. I, I think so. And, like, what may have led him to do this? Definitely has to do with the fuzzy ink for one. But we have to wait and see. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, see Senpai says, It would kind of be awkward to go to Salmon Run ships with Little Buddy on her heel. Maybe they'll stay in story mode like Marie Scallop and will follow you once you start a stage or progress by taking away the ooze. <laughs> it would. I don't think... I feel like it's going to be... We're going to see Little Buddy when we go to... They're not going to call it Cuttlefish Cabin, but wherever the Squid Beak base is, that's when he'll be around. He'll just be, like, hanging around with uh, the captain. Uh, from Ike Wolf, what do you think the mask in the hero mode art could be? They look really interesting, and it would be weird if they don't mean anything. But we didn't see them in the trailer. Yeah, it was kind of giving me, uh, like, Majora's Mask flashbacks. I don't know if uh, New Agent 3 puts them on or anything, or if they are actually representative of like some shrine gods or something because that was going to be an aspect in Splatoon 1 having Callie and Maria shrine maidens who knows maybe they give us some sort of power up maybe um next trailer we get or next like uh the focus in the next Splatoon direct we'll probably talk about them your guess is as good as mine <laughs> yeah baby um I have no idea, <laughs> but like knowing, like I've, I've been a big Zelda fan for a while. That's where my mind goes instantly. That's that's what I start thinking of. Oh, we got another uh, tweet from Octavia Octoling. Do you think Marie and Callie will have extra dialogue involving their past three? 
maybe even making jokes sort of like the comic from Bixel's. Oh, heck yeah, I love Bixel's stuff. <laughs> and some really great Splatoon content for them. I love their art all around. <laughs> Marie and Callie definitely have their... <laughs> I love their dynamic, like, actually, in both languages. But I kind of feel like Marie is turned up to, like, 200%. Like, yeah, I poke fun at my siblings, but, like, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like they kind of went OD a little bit. Uh, if they kind of, like, you know, make her a little bit softer, it'll still be just as good. But I do want to see them talking with, uh, Captain 3. <laughs> they all have their own little cute poses, like, something is, like, <laughs> something's definitely up, right? And, uh, they probably practice that pose in the mirror for, like, hours. You, got, you gotta give them credit. Just like they made their, their cape in Octo Expansion. <laughs> like, the fact that they're, they take everything so seriously, but they're still a dork, like... I need the Splatoon devs to give them a little journal so they can talk. I don't, I don't really want Kelly and Marie to talk for the captain, but it's probably how they're gonna play it. I don't know. Either that or, like, they give them a little journal. And then, yeah, because people love the chat logs. There's no reason why they shouldn't do something like that again. Um, here is a new question from C Senpai. It's also a very good observation here. Uh, the Octoling has the same victory pose as the Inkling does in the 2022 promo vid. When in Splat 2, each species had different poses. Do you think both species will have the same win-lose animation depending on weapon type? How would you feel about that? Personally, I liked it when they were different as it showed the personalities they have, but it could be a placeholder for the preview vid, not too sure. Yeah, that 2022 animation was a preview, I think, for this video that they recently released. But I love the Oxaline Victory poses. I mean, the Brella one is super cute. <laughs> you come flying down like Mary Poppins, man. If they had the same poses for, like, both of them, are they trying to save resources somehow, or... Are they just making it so it's interchangeable? If they, like, didn't code the animations for both. The fact that, like, you pointed that out, it means that other people will start to notice it. I'm conflicted. I like them both being unique. So from Duck again, we got back to the next idols. What do you think their color scheme would be? Any expectations or ideas of what you think they'll look like? I want them to be octolings, definitely. Callie's color scheme is like kind of neon pink. Marie is like a lime green. Marina's teal. Pearl is like a fuchsia kind of color. Octo Expansion had Pearl and Marina's colors. Splatoon 2 had Callie and Marie's colors like originally. It's so interesting. But there has to be pink, I think. They're not going to stray from that. But Octolings, kind of like a uh, Beta Pearl and a. Uh, Marina from the concept art. One of them, like, they they have consistently done the short and long hair, so I think they're gonna definitely go with, like, one of them having short hair, the other having long hair. If they're non-binary, I think that'd be really nice. For Misuki here, do you think we'd be able to play the story as an octoling, or would we play as an inkling by default again, like we did with uh, two story mode? Been a thought that's been lingering in my head for a bit. Yeah, I thought about that um, back in September, too. And I just wonder, like, will they be able to switch out? Even if you're playing as an Inkling in Splatoon 2, you switch to an Oxling immediately when you go to the Metro, and you switch to an Inkling when you go to Cuttlefish Cabin, so... Unless they want Octolings to uh, sort of have a role in Return of the Familians or the other, like, post-game story, um, I don't think we'd be able to. I think, like, New Agent 3 has to be an inkling from everything they've shown. But please, they can surprise us. Please surprise us, uh, developers. <laughs> you never know. Especially with that, like, dried uh, tentacle look. They look pretty cool in the New Agent 3 gear. I definitely agree. So, at Sea Senpai says, With the Squid Sisters being together again in the Splat 3 story mode, do you think they'll play a part in the stage music? Callie's voice was sampled in Splat 2, played backwards, but I don't see why Marie can't also join in on the fun. I'd also like it if they got more full songs. The only totally new one they got in Splat 2 was Fresh Start. I get the devs focus on Off the Hook, but I still like new Squid Sister songs. True, they... 
title rush it still sampled like uh their singles and fresh start was interestingly enough like the story behind fresh start was the squid sisters coming back together to make music again because they were separated pursuing different careers for a little while i hope they do the um story mode ending song with off the hook maybe featuring them i think that'd be really interesting um pearl marina didn't get singles but i guess it's because they didn't really i, I feel like the reason Callie and Marie got Bomb Rush Blush and Ty Goes Out is because they had the Callie versus Marie Splatfest and they were supposed to be the anthems for their teams. It really was a matter of which idol is your favorite, which song, you know, is your favorite, who do you support more? But with Off the Hook, I felt like we didn't have to choose between Pearl and Marina, we just had to choose between their ideals. Yeah, Off the Hook does have more music compared to the Squid Sisters because of Octo Expansion. Turquoise October is usually doing the hero mode music. But if Callie and Marie aren't, you know, they would have to willingly make the choice to do it. Would the idea of there being three sided Splatfest if there were to be a trio? This is from Danny. <laughs> If there were to be a trio idol group instead of the usual duo idol group, what would your reaction be to that concept? Also, thank you for taking time out of your day to discuss the Splat 3 news with the community. No problem. Thank you all for being here. This is really fun. Three-sided Splat Fest, no? Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> the last, last and first time I heard of that concept was back in 2019. We had the Pancake and Waffle Splat Fest. And someone uh, said, hey, we should have a third team for French Toast. And a lot of people like uh, started talking about it. That would be wild. They have to do it at least once. I mean, we had tournaments June and May of 2018. That was the only time we got that concept. I think that would be, it's, it's chaos. It's chaos just like uh, the final Splatfest results. Like, I'm not opposed to it at all. I think it would be really interesting wonder how the voting system would work with it. Not just the voting, but like the calculations for results and whatnot. Oh my goodness. We have seven idols. Seven is a lucky number. Six is not. Seven is. Wait, you're onto something. Oh my god. Wait, actually? Actually, fire idea though. <laughs> September is like, it's far, but it's close at the same time. Only a few more months. Only a few more months. We're gonna, at the same time, we're gonna definitely celebrate Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2's anniversary with a bang. But yeah, thank you so much to everyone who sent in a question for this space. Keep yourself hydrated, and hopefully you have some wonderful dreams about Splatoon. The hype is strong. I'm loving all the art from everyone. I'm just really excited. I'm more and more excited each day to continue making content for the community. Peace, everybody. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know what your predictions are for story mode if you want to. Head on down to that comment section and do what you do. Until next time, take care, stay fresh, and sweet dreams.